Good morning. It is Butterfly. How are you? Um, I'm so glad that you came by to visit. I have a book review for you. And if you like the content of this video or of this channel, please do like because it does help. And I really enjoy your comments. Do share. Uh, just let me know that you've come by. And I definitely will respond. Um, like, share, and comment, and subscribe those things. <laughs> okay, enough of the self-promotion. Today I have a book review for you, and it is Healing Mantras by uh, Verda Harper. Okay, this is a self-published work, and I'm learning a little bit more about myself over time. Um, I, I Self-published work um, does pose some, some problems, uh, for the reader because it's just not as tightly edited as I as I tend to prefer. Um, people who are like you know companies that are professionally editing work, they usually produce something that doesn't have like spelling errors or um, when there's gaps in the logic and sequential thought, uh, um, they will ask the questions that a reader would ask and then fill you know help the author to kind of fill in the gaps. So. There's some of that that I'm noticing um, in this book. Overall, it's a really great source for some information that I don't really find in a lot of places. So the, what you're going to find in here is not how to meditate. This is not a book for that. This is not a book that is going to, um, you know, be any kind of introspective. This is very specific. She goes through the language of the mantra. She breaks it down so that you can understand the Sanskrit terms um, in each mantra that she offers here. She even suggests that you can create your own mantra for healing. Um, I don't speak in Sanskrit, so I find it really kind of challenging, but um, if I were to kind of go back to the places where she's explaining, okay, this word like bija means seed or uh, marma means vital parts um, and in context what those mean so that when they show up in a mantra that is written in Sanskrit that you have a better appreciation for what you're actually saying. The other thing that she explains is that the mantra um, in Sanskrit Sanskrit is a different language. It's the, uh, she says it's the only language in the world that where the where the sound um, the sound or the vibration of the word itself carries purpose. Whereas, for instance, in English, the word will carry purpose. So, because it's using that vibration or that sound, it's the effect is different on you, the person who's who's using the mantra. Um, so different in that it'll be more healing or differently healing. So there's that. Um, she also explains basically with, with each mantra that she offers in here, and there are a lot of mantras, she categorizes them in the type of healing that they will offer. And she also gives the translation to each one right away in English. So. Um, do I, do I dare <laughs> mispronounce, um, the words? No, I'm not even going to try. Uh, but if you were to practice, she does give some of the words she'll give how to pronounce it. And <clears throat> immediately after she'll give the meaning, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, for instance. So I've gone through and highlighted all of the mantras. Uh, and so there's, I, I don't even want to count. There's a lot. So when she's categorizing them, she will um, explain how, and she'll give ex examples of people who have used these mantras that she's worked with in her practice, and how they how how it's transformative. Um, so that's really interesting. You know, if you if you have a uh, if you want to focus on your goal, she will talk about it that way. You want to focus on your goal, for instance. Um, healing something in your relationship or um, an ailment, a physical ailment that you have or an emotional sort of, um, you want to heal emotionally, some trauma that you've had. You know, you focus on your goal and then you'll use the mantra that is appropriate for it, that addresses it. And you can be very specific. 
uh, with, with that, or you can be general. So you can ask for something like inner peace, which would be general. Then you're, you're using that mantra and then over time with repetition and you use it consistently, um, then there are changes that will occur. <clears throat> As a caveat, I will say for myself, when I'm reading this, um, I definitely support that, um, you know, the, the whole concept of putting time into self-development and change and that with repetition, changing your thoughts uh, will influence the way that you affect your life. You're affecting your life. Uh, so this is one, one way. If you want to learn the Sanskrit mantra for a specific thing in your life that you want to change and you use it consistently, I absolutely think that that will work. If you think that making a mantra in the language in which you are most comfortable, whether it's Sanskrit or not, um, and you say it often enough and you tell yourself, you know, you're, you're changing your inner thoughts, your inner dialogue, um, that that will influence your life in that way because your intention is there. So what I'm saying personally is that this is one way and it does work because of the very concept that, that we, you know, in a self-deterministic way, we all influence the way that we run our own lives. You are the author of your own life. Uh, so she, yeah, she doesn't go through, you know, basically, She'll say you can sit or you can stand. You can say the mantra in your head or you can say it out loud or you can chant. Um, but she doesn't really kind of walk through. This is not a book to sit and learn about the art of chanting or the, 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 the intricate sort of details about how to go about that practice. She just basically says, you know, set a time every day and, um, and, and set down and make sure that you're comfortable. Um, she'll also mention that your, you know, your mantras have to be specific. Um, they have to kind of basically jive with you, you know, with what your value system is. And then you use it consistently. Um, here it is. Here's a little page I'm looking for. Page 65. It must ring true for you. I said dive, right? I'm paraphrasing. Um, and be used for a specific purpose. Mantra should be in line with your goals and your beliefs. They should bring peace and motivation. Um, they can contain words or sounds. And so, for, so for instance, a Sanskrit word um, may be a sound for you because it's not your, your primary language. So either way it works. Um, they need to be in the present tense and positive, uh, sitting, lying, chanting, or in silence. Make sure that you're comfortable and you use them consistently. Then she says, you know, it's not a magic spell, so they're not dangerous. Which kind of like, you know, magic spells aren't dangerous anyways. But that's a, that's a topic for a different story. Um, <clears throat> now, what I just did, reading it out loud and, and um, kind of paraphrasing, she has a self-made sort of legal disclaimer here in the front saying that uh, she doesn't want people using her book or paraphrasing any part without the author's permission, which kind of excludes the possibility of making a book review, which is a little bit odd. It also kind of would pre preclude the ability to take this book and use it in a group, which is something that she actually advocates for in her book is to work in groups. So that's, that's one of the issues that I have with self-publication is that the, um, the wording of things is not quite as tight or as, as versatile as you would think, right? Because basically when there's literature, we want to share that literature, right? So I'm taking that and I'm using that, this book, the information from this book and uh, producing this video in good faith that the sentiment is when she's making her like legal disclaimers that she's kind of protecting herself and wanting to have um, control over her content. But at the same time, this is not like a unique sort of thesis that I'm claiming information for myself. This is not a unique sort of, you could find this information elsewhere. So I don't really think that um, that paraphrasing content of it is really kind of a, a legal issue. <laughs> Hopefully. Anyway, <clears throat> so saying that, um, she does have um, a way of explaining uh, what a mantra is good for or how you can use it. She proposes uh, to improve your life, to define and achieve your goals. Um, obviously, there's going to be some introspective uh, introspection about what you wanted to achieve as a goal while you're choosing your mantra. So there's that. Uh, there's emotional healing, understanding the self, 
um, improving your relationships, awakening sexual energy, finding inner peace, protecting yourself from danger, purifying your body and your mind, letting go of the relationships that um, no longer serve you, and removing obstacles. So those are some of the ideas. Those are very uh, conceptual things. And it's basically kind of reprogramming your mind. Uh, and I'm all into that. I'm all over that. You know, when you want to find a way to kind of reprogram your mind, take control of your thoughts and say, hmm, I want to take a moment to do something other, think something other than what I have been thinking, because what I have been doing isn't working for me. Uh, so this is a really good resource for that. Um... Let's see. She does have a section, a couple of sections, actually, where she talks about the chakras, seven main chakras, although there are a plethora of other chakras that we know of. She goes through the seven main chakras. She kind of gives um, uh, some bijas and mantras that kind of tune into each one. And <clears throat> then she will give... Um, it's not quite an affirmation. It's a different kind of um, mantra. Um for each chakra that is written in English as well. So you'll have, for instance, the heart chakra on one side, she's talking about it having the, the bija yum. So you're saying yum and elongating it, of course, as you would in enchanting. So that would be for the heart chakra. Um, alternatively, you can do something in English like I am love, I give love, I am open to love. Uh, and then there are some other interesting things that she will also associate with chakra. So there's a little bit of that in here as well. Um, she also, she also, to start every sentence with the same thing, um, proposes that you can create your own uh, mantras. And so she's giving you words that you can, in, in Sanskrit, that you can use to make your own mantras. However, if you really want to get it right um, and put the, the right word in front of the other word, you'd kind of have a, you need a bit of a fluency. You know, you have to be a bit fluent in, in Sanskrit. Uh, and this, this book will not kind of get you there. Um, uh, to critique, I would prefer to have a few things at the back of the book to make the reading a little bit easier because Sanskrit is not my first language as a reader. I would like to have seen um, an index at the back of the book um, that is kind of comprehensive where I could look up a concept like the number 108 and go back to the references in the book that have that, that reference. So I could look up, for instance, um, I don't know, something about making a goal. Uh, so I'd look up the word goal in the index and then be able to reference back into that. The other thing that I would like, aside from an index, would be a, a comprehensive glossary of terms because this is basically kind of introducing Sanskrit as a language. Yet, if I want to be able to kind of remember the words just because she says mantra purusha, once and then uses it fluently afterwards. She's defined it once, but I have to go back to that page to kind of find out uh, when I see that word again, what, what did that mean? Um, and there's a lot of that because there are so many Sanskrit words that are being used. So it, it would be easier instead of flipping through the book for when they, when it was this, this particular word was first introduced, it would be easier to just kind of flip back to a glossary of terms if it was, you know, ordered um, in alphabetical order so that I could kind of really use these words and, um, it was just a level of frustration um, as a reader to not have that. So an index, a glossary of terms, oh, and the research. So there's um, some kind of claims in here that she had with regard to research, like um, that I would like to be able to kind of reference. Um, like for instance, when she's talking about animals and she's saying um, animals don't believe in a higher self or a higher power and they have been, you know, they have been known to heal from the use of mantras. And so therefore you as a person, as a human being, do not need to believe in a higher power to be able to uh, benefit from the use of mantras. I, I can appreciate the logic, but I'd also like to be able to see, you know, where, wh what are you referencing? Where are these animals that healed? with mantras and um how do you know that the i mean it's a, it's an assumption that animals don't believe in a higher power because we don't know their level of communication right um so there's a bit of that but overall this is an excellent book uh if you are looking for a resource for mantras if you 
uh, know of a different resource that is like this that gives you, um, you know, mantras, what they mean, um, some some kind of a level of comfort with the language of the Sanskrit language. That's a good reference, uh, a good resource material. Please do include it in your comments down below, uh, either a link to it or just name the book, so that um, so that this can be a bit of a resource. Because I haven't really seen other books kind of like this, and I'm sure there must be some that give this information. Uh, the other thing is, I do think I'm the first one to give a review on this book because it was published this year, and I haven't really seen other ones, at least not on YouTube. So. Uh, overall, I think it's really great. Um, this is a good resource. Um, and aside from some of those, those editing sort of issues, uh, awesome. You know, this is worth reading if, if you are looking to find out more about the mantra itself and the language it uses and how to use it, um, how it applies in a, in a sense for, for healing in your life to determine, you know, to, to determine some outcomes to, uh, basically engage with your own beingness and reprogram your thinking uh, to visualize, to set the goal, to take some time to reprogram your thinking. Uh, you know, this is, this is really a good tool. So I hope this finds you well. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. So onward and upward. Have a great day.